Well, hello there. Remember, not long ago, we talked about the uh, TXO2, a little 200 milliwatt um, FPV camera and VTX all built in with a very handy little button and display. Well, I was going to order one for my upcoming uh, mini indoor racer build when I saw there was a TXO3, which looks like this, which you'll notice is not that dissimilar to TX2. In fact, pretty much identical. And at this point, I'm not sure which ones I'm holding. But two interesting things about the TX-03, which I think make it an all-round the best so far out of the TX-01 and TX-02, for two reasons. One is confusing me, and one's really cool. The first one, it, the good bit, is that you can change it between 0, 25, 50, and 200 milliwatts, which is great, because obviously if you're flying around with other people on 25 milliwatt systems, you can't have 200 milliwatts, else you're blow away their their reception so great you can change it now the slightly confusing bit to me is the instructions tell me it's a 72 channel VTX so we've all heard of uh, a B E F and race band this also mentions band U O L and H confusing is me because um, aside from the fact that Okay, race band separates between those four frequencies quite nicely so you can get a spread there. I don't know what these other bands are doing. Uh, because it's not like you can, when you lock to a specific frequency, it's going to stay there. There's still going to be some bleed over to other things. So I'm a bit confused about what these other bands are for. Equally, I haven't seen any receivers that can actually pick up 72 channels. I'm sure they must exist, else these wouldn't. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a first look because the weather outside is absolutely awful. So I haven't had a chance to take this out. The way milliwatts work in range is not quite the same as you have 50 milliwatts, therefore 200 milliwatts is going to be four times further. It's pretty much you have to multiply it by four to go twice as far. So on that theory, I'm thinking that I should be able to have a look at 25 watts, go to 50, and then whatever 50 gets to, I should be able to go approximately twice as far uh, with 200 and I thought if I do this on the ground I've got a pretty good way of measuring it because I haven't got anything that can actually measure the proper output of these uh, little things but it might be quite interesting to get a real world on the ground how far can it go uh, so that's coming up next time but for now let's take a close-up look and uh, see how they work okay well here's a little unit and uh, once again same connectors here so this will connect to your little mini batteries you find on the sort of tiny whoop type and this is your mini lossy adapter which you'll often find on those uh, ready to fly micro quads so let's just take the uh, the lens cap off and plug this thing in nice clear display and it comes up on uh, zero which actually means it's not transmitting at all at the moment so you can go through the bands um, which I think is quite a useful thing because it actually allows you to set up something without actually transmitting so this, um, if we hold down for two seconds, that's the band select. So I'm on F, then race band, U, O, L. These are all new ones. H, then the more familiar A, B, E, and F. Um, then it tells me I'm not transmitting. So if we go to, so nothing there on one. So if we then hold down for five seconds, approximately. Nope, oops, <laughs> try that again. Right, there's that zero. If I now go there, that little one dash means 25 milliwatts and you can see I've got a picture now. Um, and what I can do is, Let's hold that down again. Two dashes, 50 milliwatts. Three dashes, 200 milliwatts. And zero, back to not transmitting. I think this not transmitting thing is really quite a, a clever little system because um, if there's other people flying and you just want to change your channel, make sure it's all set right, then you can obviously power on without affecting anything. Change your band. Oh, that skips one. Um, change the channel, 
and you, you haven't done anything, you haven't screwed up anybody else's uh, feed. But it's a nice clear display, definitely better than using dip switches and you can tell in an instant here, you're on F1, you're on one dash which means you're on 25 uh, milliwatts. Very, very easy. That bit I like a lot. I'm sure the uh, camera angle, being the same as the other one, is going to distort, but uh, we'll ignore that bit for now and just see what we got. So next thing I'll do is actually take it out uh, and get this range test. Let's see what the difference is between 25, 50 and 200 milliwatts is.